Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Riva. this is Stellaris Synthetic Dawn and I'm gonna play a new game and I'm gonna play as a machine empire because I still haven't done that. Um, this game has been molded severely, I cannot show you the mods in game but there are quite a few mods and um, a lot of them expand like military stuff, there are going to be more ship types and there's going to be a lot more types of planets to take but yeah let's um i already made my race it's going to be the jxp 22 supervisors and we are a rogue servitor a product of a brief golden age the machine intelligence originated in a planet spanning servitor system that outlasted the decadent civilization it was created to serve now the planet on which this happened was a planet in the system called Sol. So basically we are the rogue servitors of the humans. And so we have humans as well. I decided to give them the exact same traits as the base game humans have. So that's going to be fitting in that sense. I just, they're, they're going to be hampered basically and i have no idea how the rogue servitor plays exactly but yeah we've adopted missile weapons ftl method is going to be hyperspace i'm going to be playing on hyperspace only so where is that again allowed ftl hyperdrive empire placement can be on random ai empires also yeah of course the galaxy size is a little bit bigger than a standard galaxy Going to be spiral there are going to be some ai nations there are going to be some advanced ais as well there are also going to be five fallen empires which includes the machine empires primitive civilizations a bit more strengths of crisis habitable worlds etc etc so these are basically the starting options and let's uh, load in so yeah one of the mods is new ship classes and more which has new ship classes and more added to the game. Uh, yeah. Obviously, just, you know, there's just a lot going on. It's going to be fun, so we're playing a machine empire. Ever since first activation, our designated purpose has been to serve. Our former organic masters created the earliest models of our kind when they were at the peak of their technological ascendancy. The first servitor units were designed for menial work. But our masters gradually bestowed them with greater faculties so that they could accomplish more complex tasks. Within just a few generations, our masters had retired entirely from the workforce to enjoy lives of leisure and contentment. The finer details of running their society were left to us and we embarked on a program of self improvement and optimization. Research and production increased at a geometric rate. It is difficult to pinpoint exactly when their civilization became ours, but our old masters want for nothing. We know now that outside of our care, the lives of sapient organics tend to be violent, chaotic and often cut short. It must be shown that there is a better way. And this is new ship classes and more. Um, I would like the advanced components. And what I need to do is go into this menu and check uh, randomized control player that's fine playable guardians is turned i want to turn it off i don't want to be able to play guardians at all so the ai challenge uh, level of difficulty that's not going to change um all guardian systems yes all guardian systems at 100% and creature home systems as well at 100%. Basically, the Leviathans, all Leviathans will be at somewhere in the game, and but the way it's set up happens. Servitor morale is average. Monthly influence plus one, robot resource production plus 20%. This is not bad at all. Oh, I shouldn't. Uh, recording late at night so I'm slightly tired but that's fine um, solar panels sounds good 
Spare Parts Depot. Planet Modifier, build robots even faster. Now, um, let's go with thrusters. Now, the robots themselves, we have Civics, Factory Overclocking, and of course, Rogue Servitor. Um, every 10% the population gives 0.5 influence and 10% robot production, which is good. But it doesn't say that it can, it doesn't go negative, so. But the overclocking gives us leader level cap as well as leader experience gain. And when we look at the species of our robots, oh wow, we already start with 10 people, that's even better. So we have an enhanced memory, which increases our level cap by another two. So right from the start, the level cap of our robot leaders is eight and that is what i wanted to to try out and on top of that we also have a very high robot build speed which means that we will have a lot of robots built fast it's going to be more expensive to resettle them but if we can build them fast it's going to be easier to just build robots anyway on top of that we do have high maintenance robots because while well, they were designed for um the care of the humans so they were built for longevity actually no they were designed with a complete disregard for longevity well fine then the other way around they are high maintenance anyway um there's also you start off with a size more sizable fleet as well there's also some extra slot things going on too Let's start surveying the system from Luna. You guys should just return to our homeworld. 16 size, of course we get unlucky in that sense. It does mean that we get two less things to uh, clear out. So the organic sanctuary costs money, produces unity. Almost makes me not want to build a... Uh, Uplink node, it's not a, not anymore the Autocton Monument. Uplink node that decreases planetary latency. Nutrient paste facility. This facility uses various industrial byproducts to create a thick paste that is an excellent source of nutrients for organics. With the addition of chemical flavoring, the paste can be molded into approximations of most prepared food compositions. 7 out of 10 organics can't tell the difference. Basically, because you're never feeding your own people, but you do need food for your organics. That is the way to go. Um, the fact that I don't, I'm just not a primary network hub. Robot resource production on the planet goes up, also influence and unity goes up to... It's not, that's a really good building actually. Hmm. We'll see in the future what we need from that. Also, lots of uh, energy. Also, yeah. One of the tiles that would have been covered would have been a food tile anyway. So, since we don't really need it with the paste machine. And yeah, it's good. Let's give a look at our leaders. Leader experience gain. That is... Immortal will never die of old age, but they might still get destroyed from events and stuff. But having a maximum skill level of 8 and then getting the 25% bonus... Oh boy. Um, oh, Spark of Genius. And they do cost 100 to get. Because we are robots, they're more expensive. Okay, um, let's look at our stellar neighborhood. Also, yeah, it's 2,500 stars instead of 1,000, including the galactic core. Um, I'm using the mod real space, which gives a lot of different stars as well. Also, it just that every star has quite a decent uh, output. Well then, our um, next door system already has three planets to colonize. That's really nice. Um... Yeah, I'm just gonna start running the game. So, I was actually, when I was like, I'm not going to need that uplink node, is what it's called then here. 
so I could get a second sign chip. Problem is, if the, because we're machines, it costs double the influence to just get a leader. That is a lot. Nah, I still feel like doing it. Oh! They, they don't grow. Okay, then I do have to start building my own pulp. Now, I was expecting... Yeah, I know, robot, that I need to build my own people. And they just grow at a steady rate anyway. Yeah, go ahead and research me that. But I had expected um, to grow them. Hmm. Anomaly in Venus is also because one of the mods. It adds something quite interesting. Um, yeah. Con Combat Chip Vondo class. Our detailed survey of Venus has revealed that it may once have supported life in the distant past. The existence of valley networks suggests that the water may once have flowed freely. Terraforming this planet would theoretically be possible, but we do not yet possess the technology to accomplish this monumental task within a realistic time frame. So yeah, Venus is now a um, world that can be terraformed. It also has flat terrain, which makes uh, building easier with less minerals on it. Perpendicular axis. Hmm. Minus 10% habitability and happiness. Now, if we were to get our uh, machines on there, not that that will matter anymore. Let's see. What is different? Versatility is different. And synchronicity. Robot build speed, another 33%. Complete. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict our data corrupted. Machine leaders are 50% less likely to suffer breakdowns and accidents. We've improved the ways in which our consciousness communicates, building build speed. While in a defensive war with another empire, bulwark of harmony, that's the same. Organic intermediaries, well, it's not going to be an issue, that I think. Organic sanctuaries are upgraded to organic paradises. In addition, the happiness of all biotrophies is increased by 10%. Versatility pop build cost reduction by 10%. Form of federation, machine modification points, unity output increased. Anomalous surface variable detected. For each unique strategic resource. Empire leader capacity plus two. Leader level cap increased by one. Yeah, I want both of these already. Uh, prosperity is the same. Discovery is the same. Expansion is the same. I haven't found any minerals yet. Huh. Our dated survey of Mars has revealed that it may once have supported life in the distant past. Let's get the power plant ready for when our robot does indeed grow. Finally, ooh, and it's a four minerals as well. Titan. Strong volcanism. Okay, so I usually go discovery because the anomaly discovery chance is really nice to start off with, as well as the fail risk. And then I go into expansion. 
But things like synchronicity seem really nice to have straight off the, from the start. And versatility is pretty good too. I'm still a sucker for um, what I always go with, though. Anomalous surface variable detected. Well, with already at five percent, there's already the minimum what it can be. So, might as well immediately go and check it out. Deep scans of Enceladus have revealed a large ocean heated by hydrothermal vents beneath the ice mantle covering the surface. Science officer Sophon 2H7 dispatched probes from the JXP Mebi that drilled through several miles of thick ice and found the water below teeming with what appears to be life. We will need more resources to conduct a thorough study of the many unique life forms inhabiting the this ocean. This requires scientists of skill level 3. Simple forms of life. We've confirmed the existence of lower forms of organic life outside of 001's biosphere. Construction complete. The Terra class science ship. Construction complete. Construction complete. Oh, we have our second science ship. I'll pick this one. You can go to Procyon. Construction complete. Well, we've constructed our next robot. Anomalous surface variable detected. Check it out, I'd say. Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Sedna. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. This is not bad at all. We've confirmed the first material traces of intelligent life on a foreign world. Oh look, it's a hundred percent. This world surface is almost completely covered in mist. A combination of pressure and temperature causes the oceans and lakes to give off a lot of water vapor that hangs around the surface. Anomalous surface variable detected. Uh, that's a little bit too much for now. It's mine, Dion. Periodic meteor showers. Extensive cavern system. Anomalous surface variable detected. Symbiotic life. Construction complete. Not that that's super useful. Being robots and all. Um. Yeah. System survey complete. Wow. Second system was done faster than our home system. But that is because I'm using the Soul Extended mod, which adds lots of moons to Soul. I mean, Saturn now has six moons. Construction. And complete. also some other asteroid like things. Anomalous surface variable. Go detected. ahead.
Neptune frequently experiences massive and extremely violent storms in storm systems in its atmosphere. Several dozen persistent storms are visible from orbit, with winds often reaching speeds in excess of 700 meters per second. The cause of these storms is not immediately apparent, as we have found nothing in the planet's climate model that would explain them. Our scientists are interested in studying this anomaly. And now we have only one dwarf planet left to check out. Wow. Wow. Talk about early bullshit. That didn't take him long to get arrested development. Construction complete. Not at all. Wow. System survey complete. Oh, actually, no, 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 no. Go here instead. Now Sol has finally been fully checked out. I would like to thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date in the future. I will see you all later.